Hi family. Okay, I did a video a couple years ago and I was talking about, um, I felt like God was saying something super cool. I feel like he was one night we were doing group and I felt like God was saying I'm going to set people free from an idol and I asked him what it was and I felt like he was saying it's our future. I'm like, how can our future be an idol? Like, aren't we supposed to trust you for your promises and just, you know, that, that whole perspective. And it was so cool because I felt like he was saying when you're putting your faith in your future, something that you can get from your from the world, not like a promise that God's given us or whatever, it keeps us living in tomorrow and we're never present. And I felt like God was saying it keeps you out of your destination. And I was like, what's our destination? Like, Jesus, you're everything, you know? And I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, John 14, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I thought, that's so crazy. Like, if Jesus is the way, what's the destination? And I felt like Jesus was saying, like, I'm the way, but the presence of your Father, the heart of your Father, the love of your Father is ultimately the destination. Like, the Father gave us Jesus as that sacrifice so we can enter back into that relationship with our Father. I'm like, that is so cool. So that night, we all just surrendered our our future so we could enter into God's presence in the moment. And the only way that we can stay in God's presence is by living in the present. So we talk about that all the time. So anyways, I did that a couple of years ago. And a week or so ago, I was praying and I was just asking God what he was saying for like group night. We were doing one of that prophetic prayer nights. And uh, um, he had, I think I already did a video where I was sharing that unbelief is as simple as the thoughts that are slipping by that we're not trusting Jesus with. So it's not this mysterious thing. It's literally like Second Corinthians like ten five, like we're learning to take our thoughts captive. And as we do, those thoughts aren't slipping by anymore that are bringing us into unbelief, which becomes these blinders to where we're looking at everything through the filter of unbelief, as opposed to walking like children that are just trusting, just trusting God, just believing that He's good, because those thoughts are being filtered through the salvation and the promise of Jesus. So we're constantly looking at everything through the filter of God's promise. We're looking at everything through the filter of what Jesus has finished work on the cross. So there's that peace that surpasses understanding. Like we're entering into the kingdom like children, like we always talk about. So all that to be said, I did a video on that. And when I was pressing in and just asking God what he was saying, I felt like God was saying that, uh, um, staying in love is also as simple as staying in faith. And I felt like he was saying the thought of each person that comes up as we're simply acknowledging that we can trust Jesus with those people, we're staying in love because we're not trying to Christ complex them. We're not trying to fix them. We're not trying to love them in our own strength. We're looking to Jesus first, acknowledging that he's faithful, acknowledging that what he accomplished on the cross, which is then positioning us to where we can love them where they're at with the good news, inviting them into a greater faith in Jesus, which then brings the grace for change. And it's nothing they can do or earn, and it's nothing that we need to strive to do. It's just love starts manifesting itself as we're walking in faith. Like I always talk about Galatians 5, one of my favorite scripture, faith expresses itself in love. And so I'm like, man, that's so cool. I love it when God makes it so simple, which is the way that we abide in love, which is the covenant that we're under is simply trusting Jesus one person at a time. So the way we're staying in faith is just trusting in one circumstance at a time to where we're not getting distracted and lost in the world, lost in the world living for ourselves. And the way that we stay in love is trusting in one person at a time. And I realize that's one of the greatest tactics of the enemy is they'll use the thought of a person to bring us into abandonment or victim or whatever else then we start living like orphans because we're filtering that person through the filter of what the enemy is saying that's justifying us looking out for ourselves. And love is always positioned to give and it's not trying to take. And as we're learning to allow God to be the one that's the source of everything that we need, 
we're positioned to offer that love everywhere we go. But I love the simplicity of it being one thought, one circumstance, one person at a time is how we abide in love. And so I'm like, man, that's super cool, God. And then I started getting more, just kind of God was adding to like that John 14 revelation of just staying, abiding in God's presence and trusting Him with the future is how we stay in that place of entering into our destination, which is the love of the Father. So all that to be said the other night when, our, yeah, the other night when I was just asking him about that, I was seeing this picture of our hearts as we're learning to trust in one circumstance, one person at a time. We're abiding in love. We're, we're staying in God's presence, in the presence, just taking our thoughts captive, just trusting Jesus, abiding in Him, abiding in love. I was seeing our hearts becoming this dwelling place for God. We become His temple. We are His temple. Jesus has paid the price for it, so we're His temple but I was actually seeing our hearts becoming a resting place for the love of God. And this is the part that I wanted to share. And I was like, I'm like, man, this is so crazy, God. It's such a cool concept. So as we're trusting in Jesus, John 14 says, God's like, I'm going to go make a place for you in your father's house. So as we're trusting in Jesus, we're entering into the Holy of Holies, we're entering into that place. We're experiencing a, the refuge and the love of the Father under the spirit of adoption. But at the same time, our hearts are His temple. So He's kicking out the old and He's filling it up with His very Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. He's filled us up with the Holy Spirit and He's filling us up with the love of the people that are around us. And I was actually seeing, I've never heard anybody teach on this or like say this, but I just love to process with you guys because I think it's so fascinating that our hearts become that home for God's presence and his love to abide to where other people get to experience that refuge in the love of the Father that we are caring for them, which then develops family, which is the essence, the heart of the Father. So I hope that made sense to you guys. So I'm going to say it again. As we're walking moment to moment, trusting Him, one person at a time as they're coming up, Jesus, thank you. I can trust you with my wife. I can trust you with my kids. I can trust you with this person. And you're working, you're loving them. It's that faith. I'm trusting you with them, God, so I can carry your love for them. And then as Jesus promised, I'm going to go create a place for you in your father's house. So we are that temple. We are the dwelling place of the father. So Jesus prepared a place in God's house in here as his temple, which becomes a resting place for his love. And other people are experiencing the heart of the father with the love as being the body of Christ with the love that he's establishing in our hearts. So they get to experience the love of the Father through us as his abiding place. And I'm like, that is such a cool thought, which brings the unity of the body, means the unity of the, yeah, just the, us being the body of Christ. And it brings us all into the oneness we've been talking about and praying about in John 17. May we be one as he is one. And we become that family. We become a spiritual family as we're finding refuge in the love that we get to carry for each other, which speaks of the heart of the Father as we're all abiding in Christ. Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to read you a couple of scriptures, which I thought was super cool confirmation. Um, of course, I'm going to read from the John 14, but let me pull it up really quick. Sorry, I didn't have it ready. Um, it's super cool in the, the passion translation in the notes. It's, it's super, super cool what it says. So, um, I'll just start at the very top. So it says, don't worry or surrender to your fear for you've believed in God. Now trust and believe in me. Also, my father's house has many dwelling places. If it were otherwise, I would tell you plainly because I go to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. And you already know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Master, we don't know where you're going. So how could we know the way? 
Jesus explained, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes next to the Father except through union with me. So I'm going to stop right there and I want to read a couple of the notes. So I think I've always read the scripture until God gave me that revelation about Jesus going and preparing a place for us. It's a right now word. It's that Ephesians, we're seated with him. So as we're abiding in Jesus, it's not like one day we're going to go and God's prepared this place for us. Of course, that's true too. But right now, we enter into the kingdom. We can boldly enter into the Holy of Holies. And at the same time, he's made a place for us to be his dwelling place. So it says, uh, my father's house has many dwelling places. And in the note, it's so cool because it says, there are many resting places on the way to my father's house. There are many homes in my father's household. The father's house is also mentioned by Jesus in John 2.16, where it is his temple on earth, his dwelling place. This is not just heaven, but the dwelling place of God among men. There is ample room for people from every nation and ethnicity, room to spare for the church, the body of Christ, is now the house of God. Every believer is now one of the many dwelling places that make up God's house. Isn't that cool? I'm like, yes, that's so awesome. So every believer now uh, is one of the many dwelling places. So you are, we are the dwelling place. He's gone to establish that place in us for, uh, for other people to experience God through the love that we carry, his very spirit that we carry. So it says, if it were otherwise, I would tell you plainly because I go. And the note says, Jesus uh, was to go through death and resurrection in order to make us ready to be his dwelling place. He had to go not to heaven, but to the cross and pass through resurrection. And then uh, in the scripture, it says to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I will come back and take. And in the note, it says... The Greek verb used here is paralambana. I have no idea how to say that. It says, is the word used a bridegroom coming to take his bride? He takes us as his bride through his death and resurrection. His coming back can also refer to his coming to live within believers. That is so freaking cool. The place he has prepared for us in his father's house temple, which is the body of Christ. He chooses our place in the body where we will have the most impact for his glory. And then it goes on to say, um, um, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. And you already know the way to the place where I am going. Isn't that so cool? So I thought that was just rad confirmation that he's made our hearts his temple, which we already know, but it's also that resting place for the love of the Father, where people are coming to us because of what He's done in our hearts. People get to experience that resting place. They get to experience the refuge of the love of Father because He's developed that within us, and it all speaks of Him to His glory. So I just want to do a prayer really quick, if you guys are cool with that. So if you guys want to close your eyes. So Lord, I just thank you, God, for just... Uh, I just thank you for that revelation. It's so cool, God, that the essence of your heart is family, Lord. And we just thank you that you are love. And we just thank you, Jesus, that you're the way, God, through simply abiding in you, trusting with you, the, with the thought of one person at a time, God. Not, not only do we get to enter into the kingdom, God, and abide in the presence of our Father, Lord, moment to moment and second to second, but in turn, God, you just fill us up, Lord, with your presence, God, that the people around us might experience you and their, their world's falling apart, God, and everything seems to go wrong, Lord, that you're developing that refuge. You've developed that refuge in the body of Christ, Lord. And I just thank you, God, if there's <clears throat> somebody that you want to bring up right now, Holy Spirit, where we've allowed thoughts of them to slip by without trusting you, God. We've deemed them unworthy of your love. We've deemed our hearts unworthy of carrying your love for them, God, because of fear of getting hurt, Lord, or fear of getting rejected or whatever. We just invite you today, God. We just invite you to just remove, Lord, the accusation. Just remove the fears, God. 
And we just invite you, Lord, would you just fill up our hearts, God, as we're trusting you one person at a time. Would you fill up our hearts, remove those fears. And I just pray, God, that your love would cast out those fears, God, that we, Lord, could carry your love, Father, for each person, God, each thought of each person that comes to our mind, Lord. That as we're trusting you, would just fill our hearts with your love for them, that they would experience, Lord, that love in such a monumental way, Lord, that it would bring them to you, that it would reconcile them to you through the good news of what you've given us through your Son. And I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.